Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Paladin coming at ya with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered! Today it's going to be a match between White Raw and Oxzerg here on Moonglaive. Oxzerg is a Macedonian Zerg player. I've cast him once before in a 2v2 featuring Nada, and he went one base Mutalisk. I'm pretty sure that tells you all you need to know about Oxzerg. Left side of the map, we have the purple Protoss player, White Raw, the Ukrainian favorite. And on the right side of the map, it is the Teal Zerg player, Oxzerg, who is aggressive, who is a bit of a BMer. We've seen him be pretty darn chatty, again, in that one game of his that I cast. So is that a fair representation of who he is as a person and a player? I don't know. All I know is that the comments were filled with people going like, oh, it's Oxzerg. Is this map hard ZVP or not? It's a good question. I mean, PVZ. He wants to know if this is a hard map for Protoss. White Raw has no idea. We're on Moonglaive, which, uh, should we check it out? I think we've cast a game on this map before. Yeah, 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 because it has the, uh, shwing, 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 like the shuriken here for the ninjas. And it is so weird. It is a weird map. So you got this narrow ramp to wall off. That's <sighs> super wallable, but then you have this other attack path you have to worry about, too, to go to a third, but it's not really protected at all. And this is just a mess. I need to learn what build order to make. This is not bode well. <laughs> this is not bode well <laughs> for Oxzerg, you guys. If he's asking White Raw for help with his build order at the two minute mark of the game. That said, Oxzerg might just be trolling. He might have exactly a perfect idea of what's going on and just uh, pretending to not know what's going on so as to um, make White Raw think that it's gonna be an easy game. Make White Raw let down his guard. All right, so probe scouting here is White Raw. Came to the right place. I feel like this is a three player map. Just based on these two spawn locations. Should we check real quick? This is your other main. Oh yeah, for sure. Like none of the other expansions are big enough to be mains at all. So, all right, three player map. Probe harassing a little bit here. That was a hatch first play into a pool. So no hatch gas pool play from Oxzerg right now. Doesn't indicate any kind of real aggression whatsoever. And White Ross sees that and says, all right, fantastic. Let's not worry about anything early from this Ox Zerg player. Just get a cybernetic score. One gate, again, we saw one gate expand is a nightmare on this map. For Forge fast expand, also nightmare. You have to wall this and you have to worry about this little area too. It's just too much. I think it's too much to worry about. White Ross just playing it safe. You know, maybe you're gonna go from aggressive, uh, aggressive play here because again, cybernetic score pretty early way before expansion and gas pretty early here too so a couple dragoons showing up against slow zerglings could really cause some problems again just throwing zealots at the zerg player tends to work too but if you're doing that you don't need the cyber core this early so there's definitely a zealot on the way that is a very fast stargate that is a sub three minute stargate out of white raw here what are his plans what does he plan to do here macro hatch at the natural base for oxer kind of like that choice very easily accessible and again, if your opponent hasn't expanded, then you don't really want to take a third base. Generally, by this time in the game, taking a third base is not a terrible idea for the Zerg, but uh, the fact that we're on a one base over here in Protossville indicates some problems. Ooh, and then the Citadel of a Dune. This feels very much like a Corsair DT opening out of White Raw. Oh, I recently cast a game where the Protoss went late game Corsair DT and it totally worked. It was like the 20 minute mark and he's all, yeah, let's do this. Corsair's Dark Templar, go. It was very strange. It was a really good game, but I had never seen it work that far into the game before. I figured you do it early, and then if it doesn't work there, it doesn't work, but I don't know. You can transition to it, uh, to it apparently, if the uh, Zerg player doesn't take your Corsair group seriously enough, and maybe doesn't scout that you're getting up to like 10 or 11 or 12 in the mid to the late game. So anyway, it is a Dragoon. It is a Corsair. Anything to deal with Corsairs? Well, of course not. Is there anything on the way to deal with Corsairs, like maybe a Hydralisk Den or an Evolution Chamber? Something that shoots up would be real nice. Hydra Den it is. Boy, that's going to be late, though. That Corsair is already moving out. I think he's assuming White Raw went Forge Fast Expand and doesn't have tech yet. This is pretty zippy, and I don't think there's anything... Well, now the Overlord sees it, but it's too late for that. Too late for that. What's he even going to do? Is he going to toss down an Evolution Chamber? I would. I mean, these Overlords are in a heck of a lot of trouble. Scouting Overlord does see the Templar Archives, too. So this screams Corsair Dark Templar to me. Just screams it. That Hydralisk Den is done, though. And Hydras are on the way. And I mean, all right. Might lose one Overlord, maybe two. The timing it works out a little bit better for Oxerg than I thought it would. 
Did he lose Art and Overlord already? Not to that. Oh, this Overlord that was scouting died. Okay, well, that's normal. That's just normal losses. So, Evolution Chamber, Creep Colony. Going for a lair. Trying to pop a Hydra somewhere. There's the Hydra list. Let's fight. Hydra versus Corsair versus Overlord. What dies first? Corsair dies first. Because Hydra's DPS is a lot better against Corsairs than Corsairs is against Overlords. And again, single target DPS is not for Corsairs anyway. They're supposed to be splash damage -y. They do splash damage, and as a result, single target attacks are not as good comparatively. Now, the Dragoon of Pressure is going to try to get some stuff done, but there's a Sunken. And so, like, eh. Like, maybe don't come in here, White Rod. Ow. 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 God, it's a lot. Three Sunken hits against a Dragoon is a large number of hits. It's going to tell you. And look, Dark Templar are out. Surprise! And this is why we have a Spore and a Sunken at the front door. This is why, uh, look, I mean, there's no shuttles. You kind of skipped the robotics facility play. Although, oh, that's a forge, and that's a gateway. So he's not going to be able to drop them, at the very least. Like, Dark Templar are going to have to come in the front door to cause problems. Now, can also try to deny the third base, as Octor Zerg does not have a third base on the way. I don't even know what these links are trying to do. Like, what is your... I guess you just wipe this out? The DTs are out on the map checking for third bases. They're not going to find one, and maybe there's not adequate defense back home, but one DT without any detection available for the Zerg player can get a lot done. It's just, can it get a lot done in time to save the Nexus? So here comes a big Ling attack. This is kind of something I would do, to be honest. I don't know how good it is, but they're going to try to snipe the... Oh, my gosh. Try to snipe the Nexus. They got the Nexus. And, like, the Nexus is done. Hold on! He got pulled off to fight Zealots and things. Just focus down... No, do it, do it. No, the deep cheats pro. Okay, that's enough links. God, for he made it a lot harder than it should have been, I think. So we got the Nexus. Hooray! Two basing Zerg versus a one basing Protoss is a good place to be for Rot Zerg. Zergling's going after probes no, tr now, trying to take down that pile on this one Dark Templar is like whack, whack, whack. Does have 12 kills. And the probes are actually fighting pretty well themselves here. It is 28 to 18 workers. Oh, free Archon is good. Free Archon, though. Uh, 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 uh. The Zealot and the DT support was enough to keep the Archon alive with 80 HP. Probe's getting focused. This is too much. This is too much Ling Trang, Oct Zerg. You're trying to kill your opponent fast. He has no interest. Eesh. What? The Archon has 5 HP. 5 HP. Get him. Get him. Just run over there. I don't can you kill him fast enough? Well not not anymore. Okay, okay. This is this is not good for Oxer. Look, man. Drone up. Get a good economy going. Get your two bases rolling. Bring an overlord over, maybe. You know there's DTs, and you could have gotten them one there by now. Ah, but it's mutalisks. Ah why am I not surprised? Why am I not surprised Oxerg made mutals off of two base? Hmm? Hmm. So the Corsair count is not really enough to handle multiple mutalisks here. Uh, let's see. Is he trying to hide him? i try to hide him if I were him. So the Spire is seen, which could just be Scourge. It's not a guarantee of Mutalisk, but this is a guarantee of Mutalisk. So this Corsair needs to get on out. Mutalisks are a little bit faster than Corsairs are, and running is just really not not something you want to try to do. So the Archons are great anti-air against Mutalisks, especially because they stack. Splash damage from Archons is a real thing. Also, I would get Overlord's speed... Just, you're going to want it if your opponent is making DTs. So, one Archon and two Cannons versus... Mm, nine? Nine Mutalisks. And... Spread... Uh, trying to spread a little bit here. That Archon was previously injured. Ow! Ow! Okay! Alright, alright! We're down to four Mutalisks now, and all of them are severely injured. That Splash, you cannot take it lightly. Do not take that Splash lightly. In any sense, that will destroy you. Seven Drones in production... Oxerg is trying to catch up an economy to Whitefra. Whitefra is replacing his natural with additional cannons to hopefully prevent from big old Zergling runbys and destruction of said Nexus. Now, these Mutas, they're not going to regenerate their health very fast at all. StarCraft 2 does have an ability for Mutas that's default that is called Tissue Regeneration, which allows them to regener their, regenerate their health very quickly when they're out of combat. It makes them more viable, right? Because Mutas here, I just these are going to be dead for a long time. And you just can't fight with them. And Mutalisks can kind of pull back, wait 30, 40 seconds, basically get up to full health, and then come back in again. It's pretty good. That said, they're not overpowered. Like, I can't think of a matchup where Mass Muta is considered really much of a threat at the highest level. Protoss doesn't care because they have Phoenix. 
which are basically the Corsairs of StarCraft 2, and Terran doesn't care that much because there's a lot of things that can kill Mulesks if you're Terran in the late game. Kind of like a StarCraft 1 thing, so nice snipe there on a couple of the probes. Doesn't take any hits from Archons, that's a good trade. I feel like one hit from an Archon would kill a couple of these Mutas. He does 30 damage per shot, and um, I guess they have more than 30 HP. Fair enough, the splash damage is an issue though, and the way that these are- God, this control by Oxerg is actually kind of really good. I say that, he's gonna take a hit from an Archon. There it is! Okay, lost the Muta. <laughs> but really sniping probes? This is some great control. That was really well done. Ugh, at least until, you know, two more Mutas died. Hmm. So Oxerg decides he's gonna two-base this thing for the rest of all time. I don't see him going for a third, which is a really huge problem. White Raw is getting Storm. White Raw is getting Archons. I mean, the probe kill count is okay. But the Mutas are all dead, and that's a problem. I mean, Hydra is not a bad transition here if your opponent is defending with cannons and uh, Archons. But then Storm is a great equalizer there, so... Third base happening. Really should go for a third base. Send a drone up. Expand behind this attack, Oxerg. You might look at this and say, that's a lot of Hydralisks, man. And you are correct. But you know what's great against Hydralisks? Storm. These High Templar do not actually... Oh, hang on. There's four High Templar here. Where's the other... Oh, here's one. He has a lot of energy. And this one, too, has mm, one Storm. Not two yet. But one Storm... Gosh, dig it. Cannon down. Storm kind of dodged. Sort of. It's hard to perfectly dodge. There we go. Third base coming up behind this. All right. So, so far, so good. So far, so good here from Oxerg. He's down in supply, but it's okay. It's been a crazy game. He's on three bases. He's trying to take down that cannon with his Hydralisks. They do have plus one armor, which helps him survive. And no ground upgrades for the Protoss yet, although White Raw is working on range for his Dragoons, as well as ground weapons level one. Interesting is going for Dragoons in production, too, against Hydras. They do not trade well. They really don't, unless you're expecting Lurkers, which Lurker Aspect's on the way, so White Rose just maybe one step ahead of the Zerg player right now. Ox Zerg, the Macedonian Zerg. He might, he might be the only Macedonian StarCraft player I'm aware of on Earth. I'm sure there are probably more. I'm sure there are some that have done well in professional circuits and whatnot, but I just can't think of any. Get to work, drones! Lazy, lazy drones. Not happening, huh? Sweet. So, main base for the Zerg player, looking at Hatch, looking at Evolution Chamber, looking at, again, Lurker Aspect, really trying to go for those Lurkers, but White Raw is just a step ahead. He just is. He's got Dragoons. He already has them. He doesn't really want them against these Hydras, but he knows they're going to be Lurkers eventually, and he wants to be prepared for that. And until you have Dark Swarm with your Lurkers, they're actually not very good in most situations. Uh, against Protoss, anyway. Dark Swarm is the game changer, as we know. But I don't see it uh, on the way here at all. Is there a queen's nest? Is there a hive? Oxerg not really understanding the importance of the Dark Swarm. Again, spending his money well. He's making a handful of lurkers. Not going overboard with it, which I think is probably smart. And White Rose taking a third base down here at the 6 o'clock position. So it's a bit of a stalemate at the moment. It's 90 to 77 supply. White Raw is up. Oxerg on his three bases really needs to start skyrocketing in supply soon, or I just don't feel good about the rest of this game for him. Overlord kind of trying to peek in and see what's going on inside the main base of White Raw, and really nothing else to see. It's going to be Dragoons, it's going to be Archons, it's going to be High Templar. This is pretty much what we're rolling with right now if you're White Raw. Going for Kader and Amulet, working on Scourge for Observers, I suppose. If you're going to go Lurkers, Killing Observation is a great way to go. And, yeah, 84 to 101 Supply. Again, just still behind. Got some Lings. Ooh, Drop Lords, maybe? Oh, yeah. These are Dropper Lords. Actually played a free-for-all on a map, island map uh, here on YouTube about a week ago. And instead of going for Mutalisk, I decided to go for Drop Hiders. And it kind of worked out. Is able to kill a couple players, at least. Maybe just the one, actually. <laughs> Regardless, it was pretty fun stuff. So here comes the Hydra drop. And there's, again, is there any High Templar here? No, that's a problem. So these cannons all die, which means defensive future drops is going to be hard. Lurker's on in, but the Storm is going to have something to say about this. And in fact, it does. 
Uh, Archon taking hits down. Loving that. How much storm do you have? Observer picked. Observer picked. Oh, what? It's alive with one HP and then it goes down. So the detection's not here, but storm, you know, you don't have to see it to storm it. And I don't know if that was good attack from Oxzerg at all. I'm just going to call that an okay attack. He probably killed some probes. He killed an Archon. Killed some Zealots. Stopped mining at the main base for about 30 seconds. But otherwise, mm, otherwise, I'm not super impressed with it. Does he still not have a hive? Oxzerg, you're killing me. Oxer does not understand the importance of Dark Swarm in late game versus White Raw or Protoss in general. I like the macro hatches. I'm a huge fan of that. Queen's Nest at 1530, which seems incredibly late. But here comes White Raw with his big scary Dragoon army with plus one attack. He's got Archons in the mix. He's got some High Templar with a ton of energy. Like these guys are working on almost max energy. A couple of them are, which is a lot of Storm, which is 75 energy per Storm. Free Scourge. Do not donate Scourge to the Protoss. They will make you pay for it. This is another drop attempt. Remember I said future drop attempts are going to be harder to defend without those cannons? Well, there's one cannon and two cannons. One coming up. But uh, cannons, as the game goes on, actually, it's a lot harder for them to accomplish anything. So main Nexus might actually go down here to the Lings while the Hiders try to hold off the Dragoons. Can they take down the Nexus? They have plus two armor, which doesn't help them in the situation, as they're pretty much going to die to anything that tries to kill them. Can they get it? It's going to be super close. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Oh! All the Lings are gone a split second after the Nexus dies, and White Raw loses the main Nexus. That's a good victory. That is a really cost-efficient victory. That was much better. And then the six o'clock, though. Dude, is he doing this entirely without Swarm? Maybe he's like, you know what? The High Templar, just ignore the Swarm anyway. So there's... Oh, that was a great Storm. That second Storm right there. Murderous. Just murderous. This base looks like it's going to die too, though. I don't know. The Lings are kind of going after probes instead of focusing the Nexus. All these Lurkers are dying. Because again, the Dragoon count is really high. The probe count is down to 43, which doesn't seem like it's enough. And yeah, again, Lurkers just... Mm, not my favorite. Not my favorite here against Protoss, especially without Dark Swarm. It's 44 to 51 workers. Oxerg has an economic lead. He's on three bases to officially two for White Rod. White Rod's on two bases is 17 minutes, which he's not happy about. And at some point, Oxerg needs to go for a fourth. He doesn't quite have a ton of income for it, but he's working on adrenal glands. He's making more Zerglings. Zerglings versus these Dragoons are very good. Very good. Does he have any more attack upgrades? He's got attack upgrade level one for the melee. So that's helpful. That's helpful, especially with adrenal glands. All right. So main base is up. Two cannons already defending it. The long distance mining probes don't have to long distance mine anymore to their great relief. And a fourth base coming up for Oxerg at the 12 o'clock. So it's a bit of a slower macro style game. White Ra, I think, might have seen enough. Oh, the High Templar, though. Get him. Get him. Oh, they're running. They be running. They're tankier than you think they are. They're not all that flimsy. Okay, so we got a big Zergling Hydra attack. Kind of, oh, got one High Templar. Night, man, Oxerg. He's good with Lings. Kind of like it, to be honest. Is he going? Oxerg, no, it's premature. Jeez. So that High Templar, wait, who took the storm? Seven kill High Templar? I think that was you. And here comes everything. Bam, bam, bam. Top side, left side, right side. Storm on top of everything. Lings continue to come, though. The storm placement is really good. Adrenal glands is done. A lot of stuff died here for White Rob, but he's not dead yet. Oh, Archon's trying to come in. Trying to summon. And yes, does manage to summon. This Archon is a war veteran, man. 22 kills, still alive. Oxzerg is trying to win this battle with Zerglings and Hydras, and it's kind of working out for him. Honestly, that is, it is 93 to 71 total supply in favor of White Raw. He's expanding again, because that's what the good players do. Oxerg is going for anabolic synthesis and six ultralisks, which actually not bad in this situation. Storm hurts ultras because it ignores armor, but um, I don't know if it's going to be enough. 
Like, Ultra's good. I like Ultra's a lot. I probably like them more than they're good, if that makes sense. But I think he needs to go. If he lets this base come up, he's in a load of, a load of trouble. He needs to get on top of something and kill it real fast. Like, the Nexus would be a great target. Uh, it's actually... No oh, there's the Nexus. I'm like, where's the Nexus at? There it is. Circle size about the same. Archon dies for a handful of lings. That's probably a fair trade. Meanwhile, something tried to come up here to scout a sixth base from Oxerg, a fifth base from Oxerg. I apologize, but a lurker took care of him. I don't know, probably a probe, considering how fast it died there. So Oxerg, okay. Oxerg kind of catching up in economy here. He's got ultras, which I am pretty darn sure White Rod does not know exist. Nope, he's going robotic support bay. So he's going for Reavers. He's trying to get there before these ultras attack because Reavers are the ultimate answer to those ultralisks. They're doing ton, 100 damage, 125 damage with the upgrade against ultras. Ignoring that armor is a massive chunk, massive, massive chunk to take off of the ultralisks there. Because the armor is what keeps them alive, which makes them good against things with little fast attacks. Like, pretty good against zealots. Really good against Dragoons if you chomp up against them. Oh, there's a Zealot attempt to take down the Ultralisk Cavern. Wow, they got it! Okay! That's a minor victory. I guess he's got shuttles now. Fair enough. So if the Ultralisk Cavern dies... Oxerg sitting at 51 workers to 56 probes. Army for White Rod doesn't seem that big. Nobody's even close to being maxed out. This has been a scrappy match. I'm going to go ahead and label this an extremely, extremely scrappy match. Kind of liking it so far. I did see a comment the other day about a lack of Zerg wins on the channel, and I apologize for that. I promise I don't have a bias against Zerg. I've been meaning Zerg since 1998, but I don't watch the replays before I cast them. So if your race is on a string of losses on my channel, just know it's not on purpose. And I apologize. I know how that is. I know how that feels. So, hmm. Kind of feel like this army is pretty mobile. Ling Ultra with Anabolic Synthesis is really fast. So I think what you do is jump into the natural, kill it. Right? While the army's not protecting it. Although this little backdoor protection corridor is kind of awesome for White Roth. So this base is going to die. What you don't want to do is get trapped in here. He is bringing an overlord. These Ds are not... DTs are not a bad answer. Gosh, this Reaver, though. And the Storm. Uh, is this actually working out for White Raw? I can't quite tell. Oh, the Reaver hit. The massive Reaver hit. This... Oh, boy. So everywhere is going pretty poorly for Oxerd right now. He is up 124 to 100 supply, though. I feel like he's making good trades. The Ultras are coming into the main base just trying to kill whatever they can. Trying to get a... I Templar is a good high value target there for your Ultralisks. This Archon, though, is doing serious damage with plus three attack. Is actually a pretty good answer to these Ultras if you have enough of them. Attack down the right side, doing some serious work as well. For Oxerg, this Ultralisk with six kills. This one with three kills is eventually going to go down, but Oxerg still has a lead. Are there lurkers? Oh, there's lurkers in here. Hold on, hold on. Nexus does go down one half second before the lurker dies. Base down. Economy a little bit in shambles here for White Rod. 36 to 54 supply. Dude, is Oxer going to do this thing? He has a nice economy. He's got a lot of macro hatches. He's making nine hinders at a time. I really don't see that many High Templar. There's two High Templar. They feel like they're new. Check energy levels. Energy readings are pretty new High Templar. As it turns out. Okay, so White Rock coming in for a big attack. How many storms do you have? How many angles can the Hydras come in from is a bigger question. And trying to do this. The bottom side going pretty well for Oxzerg. White Rod not doing as good as he wants to. Do the shuttle dies. But the Reaver's unloaded. Reaver is such a good answer versus Hydras. This Reaver counts for a lot. A lot of Zerg is dying here, but the Lings are not gone yet. One big Reaver shot is all you need. 106 to 106 supply. This is a close match. This is an exceptionally close match. 
Where are the... Okay, so the Scourge are trying to do something. I don't know what. Look at this from Oxer coming from all directions. Wait, where are those Hydras going? Bye, Hydras! That was a really nice flank attack attempt there. Jeez, this Reaver, though, putting in serious work. Archon's in the mix, too! Did the... Wait... Did the Reaver die to something? The Reaver must have just died when I took my eye off the prize for a second when I was looking at supply here. Another Reaver coming in. Zero kills, but does it matter? Got five more Hydras on the way. Four more Ultras on the way. This is a good match. This is a really close match coming down to it here. Ultras jumping on. Ultra Hydra, not bad. The Ultras can tank a lot of damage, allowing the Hydras to sit back and do serious amounts of damage. To the Archons. The Archons still alive somehow, some way. Another reinforcing group comes into focus. Down the Reaver, they get it. A good Scarab hit there, but they get it. Additional Ultras in. Oxzerg is up 107. And GG! A white Raw taps out. Once the rematch. And Oxzerg is your winner in 25 minutes and 45 seconds. An upset win. And a Zerg win at that. Hey! <laughs> That was awesome. Woo! I pfft. remember when I was like, "Hey, Oxerg, where's your defiler? Where's your dark swarm?" And he was like, "Shut up, Falcon! I don't need any of those things." He didn't. He somehow made it work against an Archon High Templar Reaver Zealot Dragoon army with Hydras, Lings, and Ultras, and a little bit of Lurker play. That's nuts. That's insane. He did that. But again, it's mobility, right? The attack coming into the natural base did a lot of damage. Sniping off the main with those drops was beautiful too. The attack down here at the bottom right just barely happens with some ultra attacks. I mean, he was everywhere and never lost a base. And that's your key, right? That is your key in StarCraft. Never lose a base and you'll have a good time winning games. If you can kill other people's bases, I guess. Yeah, I mean, he never lost a hatchery, never lost attack. I guess he did lose the ultraless cavern to a snipe. Which was a problem, but not that bad. Honestly, he replaced it, and he was good to go. So, Oxerg, he's really earned some respect for me today. That was good. Mutalisk Micro back here at the natural base at the start of the game. Sure, he lost the Mutas, but he got some good value from them. He was able to hold off the Corsair attack with pretty good timing. And then the drops. The drops really caught White Robe by surprise. This is a map where you can do this. You can drop here. And it kind of takes White Raw or the, your opponent a lot of time to get all the way up to that location, especially if they have a third base or trying to defend. So that was pretty good. I like that a lot. This Archon has 27 kills, but he is very close to death on about 40 HP. The Zealous with plus three attack and plus one armor kind of standing in against everything with the exception of the Lurkers. And we get a Zerg win in a 25-minute ZVP and what I would call an upset. I would definitely say that White Raw is a better player than Oxerg is. We kind of saw that here, right? His expansion timings were better. His tech was better. His micro was better. But Oxer, well, was it better? Oxer just kind of was able to come at the attacker from different angles. Macro really well. Make good trades. Another army shows up. Make good trades. Another army shows up. And then finally slow the halt to the Protoss right at his front door. So good job to him. I want to cast more Oxer games now. I think they'll be a lot of fun. Anyway... Final score! We're looking at 156,000 points for Oxerg and 156,000 points for White Raw. White Raw actually outscored Oxerg by 400. That's how close this game was. Should we get an epic tag? Let me know in the comments. We'll talk about it. White Raw ends up traditional PvZ here, right? Produces very few units, kills about twice as many as he makes. Oxerg produces 600 units and kills 153. Not a good ratio. Lost a whole ton, but again, producing 600 units means your ratio doesn't have to be as good. Buildings raised here, 26 by Oxerg, which again is not really fair because overlords count as units and not buildings, and pylons are buildings, whatever, whatever, but still, 26 buildings raised is really nice against a Protoss, as good as White Raw is. <clears throat> and then just out macroed him, killed some bases, expanded a bunch. I was worried about him for a while there, thought he'd stick on two bases for too long, but. It worked out in the end. And the early aggression, too. I almost forgot about the early Ling aggression. Usually, if a Zerg player does that and doesn't get enough damage done, it really puts them behind. I didn't think he'd gotten there, but apparently he had. Apparently, he gotten there just fine, Falcon. Stop worrying about Oxerg. He can take care of himself. Okay, message received. All right. Well, you know what? That's going to be it for me today. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered. Go ahead, hit that like button. 
hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.